The world has experienced its hottest 12-month period in recorded history. That's according to data released by climate central scientists who found human-induced climate change has significantly elevated temperatures around the world. For more, we can speak now to Hannah Handel, a delegate to the United Nations Climate Change Conferences. She's also a public policy specialist and researcher at Stanford University. Hannah Handel, thank you so much for your time. How concerning is this global temperature rise coming off the back of a record hot October? Yeah, so I think it's concerning in the sense that one thing we've been trying to do, a goal that has been stated over and over within the, the climate change community, is that we want to limit global average temperature increase to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And so that's kind of a threshold that's been chosen as really the barometer after which uh, the effects of climate change will be especially catastrophic and difficult to come back from. So we want to stay below that threshold. And the problem is with these heat waves that we've been having, we're getting closer and closer to breaking that barrier. And when we look at that picture long term, it's not a pretty one. Yeah, so drought is gripping the United States where heat waves were exceptionally bad. Say in Houston, Texas, that suffered through a 22-day heat streak. Is this being felt more acutely in some parts of the world? I think absolutely. We certainly know that some parts of the world are experiencing the brunt of climate change. And unfortunately, those often tend to be the parts of the world that did very little to contribute to the problem in the first place. That is to say, they're not the historical emitters, but they're really getting the short end of the stick. And I think that's going to be a huge topic that hopefully we'll be addressing at the upcoming UN Climate Change Conference, COP28, this idea of how do we build up adaptation, mitigation, and resilience in these communities that are unfortunately bearing the brunt of the crisis but really need the tools to weather these storms and impacts. Um, so in Australia we've committed to net zero by 2050 but there are calls for a 2035 pledge. How ambitious do nations need to be at COP28 in Dubai, which you just mentioned, that begins at the end of the month? Yeah, you know, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said that we need a 43% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 relative to 2019 levels to really get a handle on this crisis and to keep that goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius that I mentioned earlier within reach. So we definitely need to be firing on all cylinders. And part of that ambition, those targets are you know, set at these COP conferences, but then it really becomes up to the individual countries to remain accountable and to see through their end of the bargain. So that's what I'm, I'm keeping an eye on going into the into the upcoming conference. Is there a sense that Dubai and the UAE is an unsuitable host for such a conference? For instance, will protests be allowed? You can be detained in Dubai for such action. Well, at a lot of the conferences, you'll see activists and youth um, in particular try to take on this sort of advocacy role and really make their voices heard. I mean, we've seen that in previous conferences as well. And I think that's part of a healthy and robust dialogue. And I hope we'll continue to see um, those types of voices being heard. I think, you know, we need voices heard from all across the spectrum, especially those vulnerable communities that we were talking about earlier, those ones really bearing the brunt of this crisis and who need the tools and the funding to build up resilience measures. So, you know, I hope people um, sort of come together and, and I hope that advocacy is a huge part because it, it really, the public is that other stakeholder that, you know, sometimes it's not completely feeling represented in these spaces, uh, but we've seen before the public able to really make their voices heard in these forums and I hope we'll see something like that again. There's also a question over the COPs president designate in Sultan Al Jabba, the UAE's special envoy for climate change. He's also the chief executive of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. Surely those two roles are incompatible. Well, we definitely know that tackling greenhouse gas emissions is huge to keeping, again, with that 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold. In particular, you know, methane is a big one. According to the Intergovernmental Pan Panel on Climate Change, we want to cut methane emissions by one third uh, by 2030 relative to 2020 levels. So absolutely, we need to look at greenhouse gas emissions as a source of human induced climate change and really focus our efforts there. So I, I hope the conference will continue to tackle that as we've tried to in past conferences as well. The that's an answer to a different question. The question I asked was about the president-designate who's leading these talks. Can you have the head of an oil company leading talks about reducing climate emissions?
Well, I think regardless of where these talks are taking place or who's involved in them, we have to have, you know, basic parameters being set in terms of agreeing that greenhouse gas emissions must be cut in order for us to reach our climate targets. I mean, so you I think that's you don't have the- you don't have a problem with the boss of an oil company leading these conversations. Well, I want the topic of these conversations to focus on cutting greenhouse gas emissions. Absolutely. And I think whoever is involved in these conversations, that does need to be a centerpiece of them. Okay, Hannah Hundel, thank you so much for your time. And hopefully we'll speak to you again when you are in Dubai for the conference.